Hi everyone, this is Kathy. I'm an instructional media developer with the e-learning media team here at Salt Lake Community College. Today we're going to look at using Big Blue Button in Canvas and then we're going to look at some of the key features of Big Blue Button. This tutorial should tell you everything you need to know to use Big Blue Button in your courses. Let's get started. Big Blue Button is a feature that is being used inside of Canvas's conferencing tab. So if you go into conferencing, it's the only choice right now for creating conferences. In order to create a conference using Big Blue Button, you click on Conference Button and you'll come up with this dialog box. You have some choices here, the name of the conference, type, right now that's the only thing that you can select, duration to enable recording, or put it as no time limit, which would be helpful for long running conferences or for something perhaps that you just wanted to leave open for some virtual office hours. A description if you'd like, and then down here, a place where you can invite all the course members. Now, not only will this invite them, but it will actually allow them access. Unless you have invited a course member, they will not have access to this conference, and it will not show up in their Canvas shell. So right now I'm just going to use all the defaults, except I'm going to click on Enable Recording for this conference so that you can see how that will work on the back end. And I'm going to update. Now what it does is that it actually creates a conference, but it doesn't yet start the conference. And so it creates a new conference that will be seen by the other members, but it will not be able to be joined as of yet because the teacher has not started the conference. You can also go back here and edit it if you need to do anything else to it. But let's go ahead and start the conference. We'll load up another tab and take us into the big blue button screens. First thing is you'll see you'll be invited to join the audio just as the viewers. I can join listen only, but I'm going to join with the microphone. When I do, big blue button puts me into an echo test. Just lets me check my audio. Test, test. Sounds good. Now I join. When I join, I see the presentation area here. Again, the public chat is visible by default and the users list. When you join as a moderator, you have a square icon which says this is all the moderators. The students, the viewers, join with circles. When I'm talking, you can see that I'm highlighting. I can mute myself here by just pressing the mute button. When the student unmutes himself, you'll hear them, but you can also click and you can mute them as well. You may also see students joined listen only. When a student's joined listen only, they can't talk, but they can hear you as well. Students can also set their status, which means their initials will be replaced by an icon. Here, you can see happy face, and I'm going to clear all the icons as well. As the instructor, you can start and stop the recording anytime. So here I'm going to do start recording, and a message appears. And I can also click it again to pause the recording. And I can start and pause the recording as many times as I want during the session. Other moderator capabilities, I can mute all the users. I can mute everyone except myself. And I can also lock the viewers down as well. So this means that I can prevent them from sharing webcams, sharing microphone, public chat, private chat, as much as you want. This one here is if you want to prevent them from seeing everyone else's webcams, it means that they will only see your webcam, but you'll see all the students' webcams. To apply it, just close, and then you'll see an icon here next to their name that says they're locked. If you want to unlock the capabilities, go back to Lock Viewers. I can just turn off the locks, and then they'll be able to do everything again. You also have the ability to put students into breakout rooms. To do this, you choose Create Breakout Rooms. It shows you a list of students. I can drag and drop a student between each room. I can choose a number of breakout rooms, the duration, and I can also allow students to choose which breakout room they want to join. Let's set it to five minutes, and I click Create. You'll see the breakout rooms tab appear to the left, and now you can see students, uh, the count of students as they go into breakout rooms. You have the ability to join the audio in a breakout room, and you can also fully join the breakout room. If you do that, it'll just give you the invitation to join, and it'll bring you into the breakout room, just like the students. You can join the audio, you can see the students in the room, and when you're done, we just close and you're back to the main room. At some point, you may wish to end the breakout rooms before the end time. You just click End. I'll rejoin the audio. And we're back in the main room. Students are all back. 
ready to pick up where you left off. Let's turn to the presentation area. Here, by default, the whiteboard tools are selected, so I can use the pen tool to draw. I have a series of tools here as well, which I can use. So let me go to a blank slide. If I want to draw, I can do a little bit of drawing. And as the instructor, I can also give the students the ability to draw as well by turning on multi-user whiteboard. When I do that, you can see their icons move and they can draw on their own layer. They can't overwrite anything, and you as a presenter have the ability to turn on and off multi-user whiteboard anytime you want. If I turn it off, all the, all the ability to draw will be frozen. If I turn it off, students can no longer draw. And if I clear, it clears all the whiteboard marks. As a presenter, you have some controls here on the left-hand side. I can start a poll, upload a presentation, or share a YouTube video. Let's start with upload a presentation. I can bring this up. I can browse my files, and here I've got something ready to go. This slide has a question on it. It could be a slide deck of 20, 40, 100 slides. Very efficient to share a presentation because it only downloads once to the user's computer, unlike trying to share your desktop, which we'll show in a moment. Here the slides have A, B, C, and D. Let's say I want to do a poll and want to ask the students what is the result. Because it's actually formatted just fairly simply, Big Blue Button actually realizes that you have a poll for A, B, C, D. You also have the polling option here, and I can choose A, B, C, D. So if I do it, the students are all presented with a poll. I can see there's one response, and I can publish the results. When I'm done polling, I just close the poll. And then I can clear the polling marks as well, because they're just whiteboard. If I want to share a YouTube video, I click here, choose Share YouTube Video. I have a URL ready to go, I just click it, I do share video. The presentation area will become the video and it will start playing and all the students will see the same video. You as the instructor can scrub ahead to the video. They'll all scrub to head to the same point, start playing. And if you pause, they pause as well. It was a really easy way to share a video with your students. If I want to stop sharing the video, choose stop sharing and I choose stop sharing the video. It goes back to the presentation area. You also have the ability to share the screen. So I'm here, I'm using Chrome, which makes it really easy. I click once to share the screen. It gives me some options here, and I can choose an application window, Chrome tab, or I can just go back, leave it a default, and choose here my entire screen. And then I click share. In a moment, the screen sharing will start up. And you'll see this kind of screen on screen effect just because I'm sharing my screen while I'm viewing it. Most of the times you'll just go to an application and you can start showing how the application works and this is what users will see. When you go back, you can just stop the screen sharing anytime you want. And this becomes part of the recording as well. Finally, as moderator, you actually have the ability to uh, make someone presenter. So you can make someone else presenter. And if I do that, Tara can move the mouse around and I can see the mouse moving. You have the ability to remove any user, and you can also promote them to moderator as well. Finally, when you're done, you have the ability to choose log out, or if you want, you can end the meeting, which would kick everybody out and start the recording. And that's it. That's an overview of how to use Big Blue Button in Canvas.